Greetings Earthlings, today we're looking at a very portable recorder. So today we're looking at this guy, the Zoom F1 Field Recorder Kit, which ranges from $170 to $200 depending on the kit that you get. You can get it with a lavalier microphone or you can get it with a shotgun microphone. Now throughout this video, I'll be recording directly to the Zoom F1 using either the lavalier microphone or the shotgun. I'm not going to do any post processing, but I may boost the audio in post. So check the doobly-doo to see what gain I have and what boost I have done to it. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You will obviously get the F1 recorder. You will get a belt clip or you will get a shock mount depending on the kit that you get. You will get a lavalier microphone or a shotgun microphone depending on the kit you get. You'll get a set of windscreens for the lavalier microphone. You'll get a set of AAA batteries and you'll get some documentation. Now, as far as the build quality, this thing actually feels very sturdy. All of the black portions of this device will be plastic, but it does feel like pretty decent plastic. And then it has these lighter gray areas, which are metal to really help absorb some of those shocks or make it last a little bit longer. But as far as the features on the front of the device, you will find a display to show you what you're recording, what your levels are and all that kind of useful information. You'll find a recording format selection switch, which you can record in MP3 up to 320 kilobits per second or wave up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Then you'll find a low cut switch, which rolls off frequencies at 80. 120 or 160 hertz. You'll find a limiter on off switch. And lastly, you will find the recording level button, which lets you adjust the gain for the line input. Then you will obviously find the record button, which is pretty self-explanatory. You hit that to start recording, hit it again to stop recording. Next, you're gonna find a play pause button, which will let you either play back recordings on the SD card or pause the recording and start it back up without having multiple files. You'll find a stop and option button. Stop is pretty self-explanatory. It will stop the playback or stop your recording. And you can hold this button down to access some additional options like your menu, your zero latency monitoring and all sorts of additional stuff. And lastly, you will find a red LED light on the bottom to show you when you're recording, when the device is on, and all sorts of very quick access information like that. Then on the top of the device, you will find a 10 pin connector, which is compatible with all of Zoom's ecosystem of capsules from their shotgun microphone to their dual XLR capsule. On the bottom, you will find the microphone line in jack, which is where you're gonna connect your lavalier microphone. And then you'll find a headphone jack, which does offer computer playback when you're running this as an audio interface, as well as zero latency monitoring. On the left-hand side of the device, you're gonna find a headphone volume up and down button. You'll find the USB port, which you can use to power the device. You can use it to transfer files to your computer or use it to connect to your computer as an audio interface. And you'll also find this very janky battery compartment, which is difficult to navigate. On the right hand side, you will find the power switch and you can also set this to hold. So none of your settings change while you're recording and you'll find the micro SD card slot. Then on the back of the device, it does have these belt loops. So you can put this on your belt and have very easy access to it. And it has a tiny little threading, which is what you'll use to connect the belt clip. Or if you get the shotgun version, what you'll use to connect the shock mount. Now, as far as the specs for the F1 mic line input, it has a gain of negative 12 decibels up to 36 decibels, an impedance of 2000 ohms or more, a recording up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz wave or 320 kilobits per second MP3. And if you are using this as a USB audio interface, it does only record up to 16 bit 48 kilohertz. Then the shotgun has a super cardioid polar pattern, a sensitivity of negative 39 decibels, a gain of about 50 decibels, and a max SPL of 122 dB. Okay, right now I do not have the low cut enabled. Let's go ahead and switch it to 80 hertz. This is how it sounds. Now we'll jump up to 120 hertz. This is how it sounds. And lastly, we'll test it out with 160 hertz, and this is how the audio sounds with that roll off. Okay, so right now I have my gain set at high and you can hear 
and see that I'm clipping. This light is blinking. You can see that I'm peaking the meter. Now let me go ahead and be quiet and enable the limiter. Now I have the limiter enabled. You can hear the change in tone of the noise. It is more high pitched and the tone of my voice is very compressed now. So if you're not looking for that, make sure to record at a decent level where you have a good amount of headroom because when you enable the limiter, you're gonna get this very compressed tone as well as a higher noise floor. Okay, so right now I have the lavalier microphone connected directly to the device recording in 24-bit 48 kilohertz. Low cut is off, limiter is off, and my recording level is currently set at mid plus. I'll go ahead and turn this to auto and then slowly go through each of the steps of gain and show you how much noise it introduces and then turn on the limiter and show you what effect that has on the noise level. Now in order to set this up as an audio interface, all you do is plug in a micro USB cable to your computer and then a menu will pop up giving you the option of an SD card reader or an audio interface. Then you have to select if you are connecting this to a Mac or PC. And lastly, you have to decide if you want to bus power this, i.e. powering it off of the USB cable or power it off of battery. Okay, right now I'm recording the lavalier microphone directly to my computer using this device as a USB audio interface, recording at 48 kilohertz, 16 bit. But as you can see on the screen, this device is being treated as a stereo input, which is what it is. So if you are using the provided lavalier microphone and nothing else and recording directly to your computer, the audio is only going to be coming out of the left side of the speaker. So if you're somebody who's using this device to live stream, you would need to go into your streaming software in the audio preferences and say down mix to mono. So the lavalier microphone comes out of both left and right speakers. On the other hand, if you're gonna be doing post-processing, you can just import this track and mix it down to a mono track and then you'll have the same effect lav coming out of both speakers. So right here is a perfect example of what a device like this is good for. It's when you're really far away from your camera and your camera's internal audio would sound like this because you're maybe eight feet away. You could have this device mounted on your body with the microphone very close to the sound source and you get much better audio quality without having to worry about interference from RF waves or anything like that. Okay, so all things considered, I actually think this is a pretty awesome entry-level field recorder. First up, in terms of pros, this thing is insanely portable. It could also be used as a portable recorder as well as an audio interface. It uses Zoom's 10-pin ecosystem, so you can use any of their capsules. And if you're recording to the SD card, you can record up to 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. But then in terms of cons, I'm really not a fan of the limited gain structure for the line input on the bottom. I also don't like that they limited it to 16 bit up to 46 kilohertz when this is running as an audio interface. And lastly, just like all entry level zoom devices, the preamps just aren't all there. But as far as the reasons why I think this is such a good entry-level field recorder is mainly because of the versatility. What I mean by that is you do have access to Zoom's entire 10-pin ecosystem, which even has a 2XLR input capsule. So you could use this as a two-channel XLR microphone recorder. But you can also run this as an audio interface with that capsule or with any of the capsules. You could have a USB shotgun microphone with this thing for all I care. It's pretty rad that you're able to do all of that with such a small device. The only other device that I'm aware of that's similar in size is the Zoom H1. 
but that eliminates the entire 10 pin ecosystem and you just got the built in microphone and a single line input. So I think if you got the extra 100 or 80 bucks and you're between the H1 and the F1, 100% I would recommend the F1. But now would I recommend this thing? I mean, I kind of already spoiled it, but yeah, absolutely. I think if you're an entry-level filmmaker, if you're doing vlogging, where you're gonna have any kind of distance between yourself and the camera, and there may be quite a bit of RF interference there, like there will be at conferences, this is a pretty nice option to avoid all of that and get pretty high quality recording. But you'll also be able to use it in your studio if you want to do Skype calls or if you want to stream or if you want a USB shotgun microphone or a 2XLR audio interface. It does all of that with zero latency monitoring and computer playback. It's just all around an insanely versatile device. And I think at this point, I'm getting redundant. I think it's cool, even though the preamps kind of suck. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up, hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? Logo beneath me, or check out the Discord server. Link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.